Chapter 39, Piper. Piper dreamed she was on the wilderness school dorm roof. The desert night was cold, but she brought blankets. And with Jason next to her, she didn't need any more warmth. The air smelled of sage and burning mesquite. On the horizon, the spring mountains loomed like jagged black teeth, the dim glow of Las Vegas behind them. The stars were so bright that Piper had been afraid they wouldn't be able to see the meteor shower. She didn't want Jason to think that she dragged him up here on false pretenses, even though her pretenses had been totally false. But the meteors did not disappoint. One streaked across the sky almost every minute, a line of white, yellow, or blue fire. Piper was sure her grandpa Tom would have some Cherokee myth to explain them, but at the moment, she was busy creating her own story. Jason took her hand, finally, and pointed the meteors as two of them skipped across the atmosphere and formed a cross. Wow, he said. I can't believe Leo didn't want to see this. Actually, I didn't invite him, Piper said casually. Jason smiled. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. You ever feel like the three would be a crowd? Yeah, Jason admitted. Like right now. You know how much trouble we'd get in if we got caught up here? Oh, I'd make something up, Piper said. I can be very persuasive. So you want to dance, or what? He laughed. His eyes were amazing, and his smile was even better in the starlight. With no music, at night, on a rooftop? Sounds dangerous. I'm a dangerous girl. That I can believe. He stood and offered his hand. They slow danced for a few steps, but it quickly turned into a kiss. Piper almost couldn't kiss him again because she was too busy smiling. Then her dream changed. Or maybe she was dead in the underworld because she found herself back in Medea's department store. Please let this be a dream, she murmured, and not my eternal punishment. No, dear, said a woman's honey-sweet voice. No punishment. Piper turned, afraid she'd see Medea, but a different woman stood next to her, browsing through the 50% off rack. The woman was gorgeous, shoulder-length hair, a graceful neck, perfect figure, and an amazing features touched in, tucked into jeans and a snowy white top. Piper had seen her share of actresses. Most of her dad's dates were knockout beautiful, but this lady was different. She was elegant without trying, fashionable without effort, stunning without makeup. After seeing Yolus with his silly facelifts and cosmetics, Piper thought this woman looked even more astonishing. There was nothing artificial about her. Yet as Piper watched, the woman's appearance changed. Piper couldn't decide the color of her eyes or the exact color of her hair. The woman became more and more beautiful as if her image were aligning itself to Piper's thoughts, getting as close as possible to Piper's ideal of beauty. Aphrodite, Piper said. Mom? The goddess smiled. You're only dreaming, my sweet. If anyone wonders, I wasn't here, okay? I... Piper wanted to ask a thousand questions, but they all crowded together in her head. Aphrodite held up a turquoise dress. Piper thought it looked awesome, but the goddess made a face. This isn't my color, is it? Pity it's cute. Medea does have some lovely things here. This... this building exploded, Piper stammered. I saw it. Yes, I suppose that's what everything's on sale. Just a memory now. I'm sorry to pull you out of your dream. Much more pleasant, I know. Piper's face burned. She didn't know whether she was more angry or embarrassed, but mostly she felt hollow with disappointment. It wasn't real. It never happened. So why do I remember it so vividly? Aphrodite smiled again. Because you're my daughter, Piper. You see possibilities much more vividly than others. And you see what could be, it, and still be. Don't give up, unfortunately. The goddess gestured around the department store. You have other trials to face first. Medea will be back along with many other enemies. The doors of the death have opened. What do you mean? Aphrodite winked at her. You're a smart wood piper, you know. A cold feeling settled over her. The sleeping woman, the one Medea and Midas called their patron, She's managed to open up a new entrance from the underworld. She's letting the dead escape back into the world. Not just any dead, the worst, the most powerful, the ones most likely to hate the gods. The monsters are coming back from Tartarus the same way, Piper guessed. That's why they don't stay disintegrated. Yes, their patron, as you call her, has a special relationship with Tartarus, the spirit of the pit. 
Aphrodite held up a gold sequin top. You know, this would make me look ridiculous. 